Hi, I'm Ed, and today we're we'll working on installing a bilge blower fan and some ductwork, as well as an automatic temperature uh, thermostat, so that we can turn this thing on and off based on the, on the temperature that we achieved to get rid of that pesky heat underneath the driver's seat on our Honda Pioneer 1000-5. Stick around. Okay, so here are all the parts I'm going to be uh, using for this. Uh, here's the primary piece, which is a uh, turbo inline blower, 12 volts. So it's a high capacity, 140 uh, cubic feet per minute. Uh, so I'll put all the parts in the descriptions uh, uh, down below. This is a standard four inch uh, tubing. And then this is my digital temperature um, sensor uh, thermostat. Uh, comes with a little temperature probe here as well. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show this uh, later on. Uh, this is a 3D printed case. I'll go ahead and uh, put links in the descriptions below. And if anybody's interested in having, uh, having uh, me uh, 3D printing these uh, uh, for them, I can go ahead and probably uh, do that as well. Just uh, uh, send me an email on this. Um, but anyways, I'll go ahead and uh, get started on this. That should be, should be uh, pretty easy. Okay, real quick, here is your simplified electrical diagram of this particular install. Um, again, when I say simplified, I am not including the uh, solenoid uh, install, which you really should have. So uh, your, usually your solenoid and your key on function would be uh, would be sitting right here. So again, it's just uh, simplified. So I'm just showing hey, your power going to a fuse block. So just um, anyways, moving on. So uh, what I have is uh, two power wires going from our fuse block going to my uh, thermostat control. So the way I, I do this is I run power over to uh, this terminal right here. And then when the thermostat uh, does turn on, uh, the, it sends power through the relay and then jumpers over to this guy right here. And then that's how I send power through this over to the fan. So that's how it turns on. And then I extended the uh, thermistor and then that's how I control uh, the, the temperature. So that's how I read that. That's uh, how it displays right there, okay? Because obviously when I have the, um, uh, the thermostat mounted up in the hood area, that's how I read the temperature uh, underneath the seat. And then run the negative wire from the fuse block. You have to have that on that second uh, pin right there in order to be able to power up the, uh, the thermostat as well as the uh, power wire up on that, uh, that top pin. And make sure that you have um, the correct gauge wires on this. Uh, if you use too big of wires, you're going to have to remove some of the uh, some of the copper pieces, and then make sure that the wires are not going to be touching or causing any problems on, on this. Um, be careful because when you do cinch these down, uh, these things are the, um, these terminals are not super strong. So um, also uh, be mindful of the um, of uh, the power ratings of the relay. Um, this particular fan uh, does draw uh, three amps. Uh, but this particular one uh, is rated uh, adequately, so um, I'm not too worried about that. But uh, at the same time, it's like, hey, uh, if I do a too too big a gauge of wire, um, then uh, um, it's obviously, you know, it may, it may or may not fit uh, on there. So, okay, so our fan is going to draw about uh, three amps uh, when it's running. So based on a roughly a seven foot uh, length run. Uh, we can go ahead and drop down our gauge. Um, so uh, with, with a little bit of margin, it uh, looks like we can run uh, safely about an 18 gauge uh, wire. Technically you can run a, a 20 gauge, but uh, uh, just to be kind of safe on, on the safe side, I recommend running an, uh, an 18 gauge wire. So if you want to go ahead and just see uh, uh, this particular uh, calculator, you can go ahead and put in your, your amperage and wire gauge. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. But this is, uh, this is wirebarn.com. They have a neat little calculator, so you can put in the uh, uh, the automotive uh, voltages you're gonna run, uh, put in your, your amperage draw on there and, and estimate the length, and then it'll it'll cal calculate your maximum length uh, that, that you can run and, and tell you what your if your sizes are gonna be okay for your wire lengths. So there you go, 18 gauge wire for this particular install. All right, so obviously you need to go ahead and open this seat up here. Uh, this is for a 2022 uh, model, and so from here I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, pull this uh, little heat shield off and. Uh, we're in so a um, couple different options here um, I want to go ahead and, uh, and illustrate this uh, obviously uh, Honda was uh, was obviously looking at this and trying to see how we can get rid of uh, some of this so I have not done any drilling or anything like that yet there's already a hole on the uh, left side over here so if you look, uh, there's the uh, there's the dipstick right there there's already a hole I can I can utilize so if I was to go ahead and say mount the, the fan right here to this bar and I go ahead and excess the heat in this direction and then just drop it straight down. Uh, that's one way to do that. Or I can go the other direction and I can go ahead and mount it this way. And then I can bring bring the heat this way and come down. And then I go ahead and go, uh, as long as I don't hit the, uh, uh, get in the way of the, uh, I believe that's the uh, drive selector uh, uh, piece. I believe it's for four wheel drive. 
Um, as long as I don't hit that, I'm gonna make sure I get I provide enough clearance. I go ahead and, and drill a hole right there, and I go ahead and have I have that for my uh, for my air dump there. And the reason why I would do that is because if I bring the air down over this way and I put in a splitter, I would have the option of switching the uh, uh, the heat dump from either down for summer or I can put some vents in and I can bring it forwards into the cab for winter time. So that would be a great, great way to kind of double that as a heater option uh, for us. So two different options. Again, one is dump it out that way through the port that's already there or bring it over this way so we have the option of the splitter. Um, I'm going to use the uh, this way uh, for the initial, but I'll probably end up flipping it uh, later on. I'm just going to go ahead and just zip tie it straight to this bar just for now and then set this up and get this uh, set up and started. All right, so here's my initial setup. You know, I just have it zip tied up here to the top. I'm gonna go ahead and clip these off and go ahead and uh, clean that up. So my tube is just running all, all down the side of the, uh, of, the, of the transmission there. So let's uh, be sure to avoid all of the, uh, the, um, the exhaust headers or anything like that. Just go straight down uh, into, that, uh, into that hole on the side. So I'll go ahead and run some uh, run some power wires. I'll go ahead and get the uh, thermostat set up uh, down here. I'll probably just uh, stick it to one of the walls. Or I'll uh, run a pair of wires for uh, you know, to extend the thermostat. Put the extend put the thermostat up uh, up in the front side area. Uh, run these power wires as, as well uh, up to the front. I'll drop it into the relay, uh, and then uh, got that all set. That's probably actually what I'll do. I'll have the thermostat all uh, up there in the front. Uh, area so a bit more of a pain in the butt to, uh, to do but i have thrown the wires anyways so yay um in, in hindsight i just have the tube dangling down uh, right now i'll go ahead and trim that and i'll probably also get a uh, uh another part to, to uh, uh go ahead and secure the, uh, the uh that down below so that way it uh, uh it's not just uh just dangling because uh, i don't want it to uh, uh to pop loose and uh get uh um uh, you know, flying all over the place and everything like that. So I want to make sure it's secured down there to the uh, to that bottom skid plate. So I'll go ahead and include the link in the description down below for whatever that is that I get. All right, just uh, popping the front skid plate off. This makes it a little bit easier to go ahead and get in here and uh, run the uh, the wires. So uh, there it is underneath here. So uh, here's where the wires uh, come down. Uh, this is obviously the uh, the front right uh, wheel well uh, right here. Uh, this is a uh, front piece here. This is part of part of the part of the frame. This is uh, part of the uh, uh, wheel well uh, uh, fender piece here. So wires come down uh, from the uh, uh, from the hood area. It comes down this section uh, back underneath here. Comes down and then runs underneath back in here. And then there's a small little piece. There's this frame. Kind of hops over this uh, section of frame in here. And then from this, see there's some wires that already run run through this. There's the part of the wire loom. And then from there, just kind of follows back, and then that's where uh, it kind of pops up. And then from there, we can go ahead and grab it uh, from uh, where the where the seat area is, and then uh, we can go ahead and just kind of uh, bungee tie uh, everything together. So, by the way, this, these uh, these bolts down here, uh, these are uh, 10 millimeters. Okay, so I got my last part in. This is a three-inch uh, sleeve. Yes, this is plastic, but uh, because of the uh, um, we're venting the heat out. I'm not too uh, concerned with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in from uh, from the bottom side. I'm gonna go ahead and drill, uh, prep the holes. Oh, there's my, my kitty Luna. She wants to be a star today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just uh, drill some holes, and I'm just gonna just pop rivet them from from the bottom uh, down onto the uh, onto the bottom skid plate uh, and get that all set up. So uh, because the hose is so long, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, trim the hose back, drop this in, pop rivet it in, and then slide the uh, the hose onto the outside, and then. Uh, Go ahead and uh, put the clamp on. So, a bit, uh, bit uh, difficult to, uh, to get this all taken care of, but uh, hey, at least I know it's not going to go anywhere. All right, so to make this easy, I've already trimmed this just by taking an X Acto blade, uh, trimmed it all the way around the edge, and then I just grabbed a, a pair of uh, decent cutters. I went in and then just uh, snipped the um, Snip, snip the thicker wire here. You want to use a decent set of cutters because if you use a uh, thinner set of uh, cutters, it will start to shred your uh, your nippers. So be careful of that. So then from here, I'm gonna, I can go ahead and, go ahead and kind of stuff this back up here. I can go ahead and grip it from the from the top side. I can go ahead and shove this up. I'm not going to go ahead and use this from the bottom end. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark um, the the holes. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the the holes out, and then I'll go ahead and shove the 
um, pop rivets up into the holes. And I go ahead and take this out, set the, um, I'll pull, pull the, the tube up, uh, mount it to the, uh, to the flange unit from here. I can drop this down from the top side, uh, drop this onto the pop rivets, and then I can go ahead and pop rivet it from the, uh, from the bottom end. So that's probably the easiest way to make this happen uh, for this particular install. All right. All right, so for pop rivets, it's a standard 1 8 inch size for the, for the size of pop rivets I'm putting in. And then to, to add some extra stability, I'm adding some uh, some minor uh, washers on the uh, on the front side. And then I'm going to add the same washers on the back side once I get the um, back side flange uh, put into place. And then I'll go ahead and put the tool in there and go ahead and pop them in, uh, in place there. All right, so I have my flange attached to the hose. This is probably the toughest part of the whole job is just getting this down there and then getting it lined up to the pop rivets and then getting the washers uh, added to the top. So, yeah. Okay, so this is, for the most part, relatively easy to get to uh, to attach and get to because obviously here's my, my pop rivets right here. So you have this little access port right over here which you can just reach your hand over into. And then I can feel my way over to this and I can kind of guide and I can move this over and I can just drop it right into place. And so it's kind of difficult to really show on the video, but the idea here is I can reach my hand through this hole over here and I can, I can move this and jiggle it in and just drop it right onto the, uh, onto the pop rivets. So it's, it's really easy to do this right from underneath and, and get into place. Now, as far as getting the, uh, the washers uh, onto the top side. Um, that's damn near impossible because the washers are super, super small. So I'm pretty much just gonna abandon that particular effort. Um, I just have them uh, done on the bottom side. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it from the top side um, just because I can't really reach from the top and still be able to see. Uh, and I definitely can't do it from the bottom side because I can't grip the uh, the washer. So um, I think this is uh, this is about as best as it's going to get for this particular uh, install. But I'm going to go ahead and just uh, pop rivet these in. This should hold it in place because even with the with the, all these, uh, these these things pop riveted in, this thing isn't really going to go anywhere just because of the way it's sitting. So this is perfect. All right, pop rivets all in place, ready to seal up the whole bottom and ready to test this out. Okay, so this is really how it's, this is supposed to look. So if you have your temperature set at say 35 degrees, it is set for cooling mode. That's what the, the C is down in the, right there. Notice how it, uh, it does not have the, the blinking out on, the, on the, the side. The blinking out means it's basically set for emergency stop. So that way it will not turn on and off. Uh, the setting, uh, if you go through the, through the settings, if you have a, um, a two, uh, a blinking two on here, that is your temperature swing. So what that means is if it goes two degrees above your set temperature, it will go ahead and uh, turn, the, uh, turn the cooling fan uh, back on and then wait for the temperature to go ahead and get back down to your, to your set point and then it will turn it back off. So you notice the, uh, it is uh, trying to cool itself back down again to get to that point and it will shut itself back off. And then because the uh, the motor is still uh, still warm, it'll it'll creep back up again and it'll it'll turn back on again. So um, this is just my initial test. I'm probably going to go ahead and, and set this uh, back to uh, back up to about uh, 40 degrees uh, Celsius because I think 35 is just a little bit too low uh, for this uh, particular uh, setup um, because. Uh, even with this, uh, the, the, t the temperature underneath the, the seat, it's not super warm. Um, it's not exactly uh, cook cooking our buns yet, um, but uh, it is at least uh, kind of getting rid of the heat. Obviously the engine is not, not running right now, so I'm running off of the auxiliary battery, but uh, uh, this is kind of, uh, it, it's running for uh, an excessive, excessive amount of time. So um, I think the this is a bit too low for, for what we want it to be. Okay, so for setting this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tap the set button and so here is my my mode here this is in my either my cooling or my oops here's my cooling or my heating mode so obviously I want cooling mode I'm going to go ahead and hit that again here is my set te set temperature point I'm going to go ahead and raise this up there's my, there's down here's up I'm going to go ahead and go up to um we can probably set this to either 38 or 40 we'll probably gonna go 40 degrees uh, for now all right and then this is your temperature swing. So um, when it hit, when it turns on, it has to, has to be two degrees above the, your, your, your set point in order to turn on. And then once it hits your set point, then it will shut itself um, off. So 
um, this is how we're going to establish uh, our, our temperature uh, swing points. Okay. All right. All right. So there's my final install. So uh, you see how I have the um, the whole thing is, is just uh, zip tied right there uh, well, over to the, uh, to the part of the frame. So I had to go far over to the left because the uh, the way that everything is all set up uh, because. Uh, all the, there's just nothing really uh, big enough or sorry, small enough to really uh, get this zip tie onto. But it's over on the far left, it's up and out of the way, so uh, if any water or anything, uh, uh, rain gets on there, uh, it won't, it won't uh, get uh, any water intrusion dry, directly onto it. Uh, it's still easy to get to. There's the fuse box, so um, that should be uh, perfect. Uh, okay, so this was the install of the uh, bilge fan underneath the seat for uh, the Honda Pioneer. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Uh, and all the, obviously all the links are down in the uh, links in the, in the descriptions down below. And happy riding.